Okay, so here we have again a slightly more difficult problem, uh, although it actually looks quite simple. Well, uh, most students will be tempted to, at this point, just write all of the x's in the format uh, coefficient x and exponent, so that this becomes 7x to the power of a half, x to the power of 3, minus 7x to the power of a half, and plus 3, and for some they like to write x to the power of 0, okay? And uh, then they would go ahead and say, okay, well, that means the derivative is equal to, and then they find the derivative of, of each element here. But remember, we can only find the derivative of terms with the uh, work that we've done so far. And, and at this point, we actually have two factors. We have this factor times that factor, which means in order for us to be able to apply our um, derivative of uh, this expression, we will first have to multiply it out. And that doesn't make it too difficult. It's something we definitely can do. So let's, let's do that. Then we get 7x to the power of a half times x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 3 and a half. Now 3 and a half is half of 7. So 7 divided by 2 minus 7 times 7 is 49 x a half times x a half means it's x a half plus a half is x to the power of 1 okay plus 7 times 3 sorry is 21 and then x to the power of a half times x to the power of 0 we add up the exponents gives me x to the power of a half there we go. That is my expression, and now I've got distinct terms. So now applying my derivative uh, is, is not a problem at all. And I simply do that, and I can write my answer here because I'm doing the derivative now. The derivative is now equal to 7 times 7 is 49 over 2. Multiply the exponent to the front and subtract 1 from the exponent. So when I subtract 1 from something over 2, I subtract 2 over 2. And then I get 5. x to the power of 5 over 2. Then for this one, if I uh, multiply the 1 in front, I still just get negative 49. And the x to the power of 1, I subtract 1, so I just get x to the power of 0. Which I don't have to write, that just means it's 1. So x to the power of 0 is just multiplying with 1 plus and this one, a half times 21, gives me 21 over 2 times x to the power of a half would now be x to the power of a half minus 1 or minus 2 over 2, which will give me negative 1 over 2. Now, they'll always, well, most of the time, I think, at least, so they'll ask you to write your answer with no negative or fractional exponents. So all of the, the divided by 2 we should make square roots and all of the negative exponents we must take underneath uh, to the denominator or if it's in the denominator we'll take it to the numerator but you won't have that in these examples okay so we've got 49 over 2 it's a positive exponent so there won't be anything else in the denominator times the square root of x to the power of 5 minus 49 plus 21 over 2 times, and this time we have a negative exponent, so we actually have x to the power of a half in the denominator, which means that is the square root of x in the denominator. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's that's really it. That's, a, that's the best way I can write this. If you want to, you can take out x as a as a common uh, square root of x is a common factor but you see this term doesn't have a square root of x so let's not okay uh, so what I am going to do in the next step is what they're asking me find the derivative in the point 4 so if I were to draw this this function on a graph okay this yeah it is a function it can be a function yeah it is a function if I were to draw this on a graph I would have some sort of shape. I, who knows what that would look like. And at the point 4, let's say that's the point 4, we have a tangent line. 
and that tangent line has a gradient m is equal to something what is that gradient well if this is the point four that gradient is the derivative in the point four so i need, just need to substitute four in here and then i'll know what is the gradient at that point so let's see what it is if i substitute four in here i get 49 over 2 times 4 to the power of 5 minus 49 plus 2 into 1 over 2 times the square root of 4. Let's see if I can do this without a calculator. Okay. This 4 to the power of 5 is the same as saying 4 to the power of 4 times 4 to the power of 1. Or I can just say, well, 4 is 2 squared. So 2 squared to the power of 5 is equal to uh, 2 to the power of 10. And the square root of 2 to the power of 10 is 2 to the power of 5. We just halve the exponent. So this is 49 times 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 minus 49 plus 21 over 2 times square root of 4 is 2 so that's 21 over 4 okay where are we getting with this let's see here one of that can cancel with one of those to leave me with uh, uh, 2 to the power of 4 that's 16 so I've got 49 my, uh, times 16 minus 49 plus 21 over 4 Okay, let me just be funny. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm having so much fun working with this. So this is 7 squared times 4 squared minus 7 squared plus 21 over 4. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Here's the difference of two squares. So this is 7 times 4 minus 7 times 7 times 4 plus 7. Okay plus 21 over 4. Okay, 7 times 4 is 28, minus 7 gives me 21. Okay, times 7 times 4 plus 20, that's 35. Okay, plus 21 over 4. 21 times 35. Well, I know I can write 21 as 20 plus 1 times 35. Why do I do that? Because multiplying with 20 is easy and multiplying with 1 is easy. So I'm just going to do that and then add it up in the end. So I've got three, 35 times 20. Okay, if we just double it and add a zero. That's 700. Okay, 70 is double. Add a zero. Plus 35 times 1 gives me 35. Okay, plus 21 over 4. So why do I keep this for last? Well, it doesn't fit in with the rest. I'll just add it at the last minute. So we've got 731. Okay. And then 4 goes into 21, so let's actually do that. Let's take 4 divides into 21, 5 and a quarter times. Okay, 4 goes into 20, 5 times, 1 remains, so that means I've got 1 that still has to be divided by a quarter. So this final answer is 735 plus 5 gives me 40 and a quarter. Okay. That is a very steep line, okay? But that's what it is, and uh, I've really had fun just uh, doing some arithmetic there. So I hope uh, I didn't waste too much of your time, and you actually learned something from that as well. I'll see you in the next video. We are definitely looking at more of these, see if we, how complicated we can make it, and how, sim how much we can simplify that. See you there.